Hello there, everybody. Welcome back to Leading Our Own Way. I'm your host, Andrew White. Thanks for keep coming back every week. I really appreciate you guys. I really, really do. I, I honestly mean it to the, from the bottom of my heart. Um, yes, I'm, I'm so appreciative where we're at with the show. And um, yeah, keep on coming back and keep on sharing it and subscribing and following whatever you have to do on your favorite platform. But anyway, let us go. Let's get on with today's guest, Mr. Ryan Betson. Um, I actually met Ryan at my son's birthday party. <laughs> it was, Ryan was stood at the side when all the kids were playing and um, I ended up speaking to him after the, after the party kind of finished. And um, I started talking about the podcast and he started talking about his journey and his trauma and his neurodiversity. And um, boom, before you know it, we had a guest and um, he's more of a pro than I am. He's got this amazing studio. He's in charge. He's a paid content creator. His side hustle is an independent wrestling as a commentator. I seem to attract these ones, by the way. Um, but, you know, he's, he's harnessing a newfound neurodiversity. Uh, diagnosis a few years ago uh, to work in fields that he, that he truly loves and is passionate about. His principle is is using his neurodiversity as a superpower and how to use it. Um, it has affected his relationships growing up. Um, he's growing up, you know, being bullied at school, not really knowing um, about neurodiversity and ADHD uh, growing up. Um, parents split at a young age and uh, it, pretty much cost his marriage and he's very open. He's very vulnerable about the toxic person that he was. Um, he's found love. He's found purpose. He's, he's got a great perspective, um, perception of himself more importantly. And, um, he's just a great conversation. He's easy to listen to and you're going to, you're just going to love listening to Ryan because I just sat back and he did most of it. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Um, tune in to Ryan. We'll be right back after this little trailer. Cheers. Welcome to Leading Our Own Way. I'm your host, Andrew White, and this is the podcast that unveils captivating narratives of resilience and personal triumph. This podcast is for anyone seeking inspiration and insights on overcoming life's challenges. Follow and subscribe, and then we can lead together forever. Good evening, Mr. Ryan Betson. How are you tonight, mate? I'm very well, man. How are you? I'm really good. Thanks for asking me. I, mate, I've been so excited all day about getting you on the show. Thank you for joining me on Leading Our Own Way. Such a pleasure to have you here. And uh, what have you been up to recently? Uh, myself? Yeah, not not too much. Just the, the usual day hustle, side hustle, uh, all the other little nonsense that I'm sure we'll get into. But oh, no, yes. I'm quite excited to, to record this as well. Like, it, it was it was funny, both, you know, you and I uh, essentially always do on the work. Uh, his, we met at like our, your son's uh, birthday party. My son was there and we just started chatting and cause yeah. I'm like a seasoned podcaster as well. You know, we, we sense our own. It's like a magnet thing. So we started chatting and next thing you know, it's like, Hey, you want to come do my show? I'm like, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm, I'm not going to lie. You were stood quite quiet. You were staying out of it. Mm. And I just started speaking to you and you was like this big massive personality came out it was amazing <laughs> well no because especially like when it comes to you know oh, my my son and, and like all he, like i don't like i'm not very good at you know initial social connections and we'll we'll get into why shortly yeah. um but for me i'm so i'm always that hesitant of being like hey uh but yeah very quickly you made it open and easy and comfortable and uh you know as a notorious oversharer you're like here's some overshare i was like oh, the floodgates are open let's go and oh you're and like, hey, i do a whole where we can just uh, overshare. I'm like, I'm in. So we're going to have part A, part B, and part C. <laughs> yeah, the longest <laughs> recording you've done will be this one. Uh, I'm sure it'll be a pleasure anyway. Um, well, on that note then, mm. uh, Ryan, um, I normally start by asking the guest, um, how are they typically leading their own way? So for me and how I lead my own way uh, is I have taken the information that I have gained in the last couple of years after quite a substantial, uh, you know, moment of trauma uh, mm. for me. I, I took that. I took some learnings about myself and I completely reshaped the way I work, the way I, so, you know, every, everything about me. So, the, mm. I, so at its core, you know, because I just ramble a lot, at its core I like is it. I took my diagnoses around my neurodiversity and chose to wear it, uh, not wear it, I chose to use it as a foundation of strength and growth to allow me to, sh to shape my life 
into exactly what I need and want and enjoy. And therefore, I'm happier and everyone around me is happier. That is how I, how I choose to lead my own way. Is it the most articulate version? No, but it happens. It's what I do. I love it. No, absolutely. And you are a season. Just actually, I wanted to bring back up the season uh, mm. podcast. If you look at the studio behind, uh, <laughs> and, and like it's not, it's not one of those like team zooms fake ones. You can touch it. You can touch all of it. It's all I love it. hundreds of dollars of useless crap on shelves. It's the best. <laughs> You definitely belong behind the mic, mate. You really, really do. It's awesome. Oh, thank you. I'm, I'm curtsying right now. You can't see because it's a standing desk, but it yeah. was a lovely curtsy. And for those who, uh, you know, he he mentioned on the bit of a pre-chat before we got onto the interview, he's he's moving and I, I looked at devastated. Yeah. You actually have to move all of that stuff and start again. Uh, well, see, well, this is the second time I've moved my house, uh, moved uh, this whole set. Um, yeah. And I'll discuss that later. But yeah, no, it's fine. Like once you get it going, like, you know, the joys of being really particular is you're like, no, no, this goes here and this goes here. And, and even then I'll just cram it all in a box and then tinker with it later. And I'll get so much just like satisfaction of rebuilding this thing. Nice. I can't well, wait. With some of the things you've just shown there, if you are watching on YouTube and Spotify, um, this kind of connects to what you are doing professionally in the modern day, right? So absolutely, go for it. Talk, talk to us about what you're doing. Beautiful. So um, firstly, I'll talk about this, which is technically a side hustle, but then it leads into all the other things that I do. So I have been a, uh, a content creator, a, a working in uh, enthusiast press, press around the gaming space for the better part of a decade. I started, uh, actually well, longer before that, I started podcasting in my kitchen, uh, which then expanded into working in radio at Provision Australia and then local radio. And then I went, I can do this at home. So I did. I built the most rinky dink little studio in the back room of my old house, uh, literally with lights that were made out of salad bowls and tinfoil uh, to then slowly bit by bit building up the space behind me. So in that last 10 years, I, I run a, a, a side, like a side hustle of a company that I created called the pop culturists as in the pop culture is the pop culture scientist, uh, off the original idea of myself with my uh, science background. Um, I'll we can talk about that a bit later too. Uh, mm -hmm. and then combining my love of, of pop culture, bringing it together. Um, so what started as a wide reaching talking about games, movies, TV, comics, you name it, uh, over the years and series of burnouts, uh, I did nicely reduce it down to uh, just talking about PlayStation um, specifically, which is something that I adore. I love it so much. I tattooed it on my arm. Um, you know, so yeah, that's show what that, I do. Show that again, because I think that matches some other th things. Oh, it's, oh, literally, you know what? it's literally that, that, that little thing there too. And that hey, one. And it's on the cup. And it's on the cup too. Oh, it's one of those things. Like, you know, it's, it's insane how much four little shapes just like <laughs> – I adore and they just represent so much to me. And I can talk about that too, because this yeah. is aside from it just being a tattoo that I got, it also does have symbology because if I, you know, there's one thing I love, it's unreasonable symbology. Um, but, but yeah, so I run a, a, the podcast that I do most currently is called for the players, the pop mm -hmm. culturist PlayStation podcast. I have to use that full name because for the players is a trademark, not by me. Um, but yes, yeah, so we've been doing that for a time of recording over 350 episodes. That's close to six years. Uh, mm. And we are one of the top three PlayStation podcasts made in the country. Um, one of them just shut down. So I might be in top two now. There we uh, go. Yeah, there's not many of us. You know, there's two, there's couple, singles of us, singles. Uh, well, I'll, I'll put all this in the show notes as well if I can grab them. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, that's, that's uh, what I do. And by doing so... That then led me into a various number of roles. Um, we'll talk about my... I keep saying we'll talk about it. It's only because I know I'm going to like not shut up. But um, <laughs> with my current role, so I currently work for a company called The Man Shake. They are a meal replacement shake based out of here, Australia, um, that I used to do a weight loss journey a number of years ago. Uh, and I now work for them as both the community and content manager, as well as their short form video specialist. So in short, I took the things that I love, which was games and media and all that, and literally made it into my job. Um, yeah. So just to sort of expand on that leading my own way. Mm -hmm. um, so with all those things, I, you know, no, no official media training, no fancy pants, like media bits of paper, all completely self-taught. And that's, that's, that's what I do. And then from there, 
my other side hustle of working in independent professional wrestling. Uh, literally, this studio and the things I say into this very microphone uh, led me to that great opportunity. Yeah, amazing. You know, on that note, it's, it's weird how leading our own way, I've never been around wrestlers, never been around arm mm. wrestlers since creating this podcast. I think I've had like four or five guests all connected to arm wrestling slash wrestling or yeah. uh, martial arts. It's bizarre. Uh, mm. uh, maybe there's a bit of a pattern of why people go down the route they go to. Maybe it's the outlet that this gives people. Maybe Ab I don't know. It just came to my head. No. Well, but if, I can, I can touch on that right now. If you want, you want me to expand it on that later. Well, before you do though, because you, mm. I, I want to come back to that, but I don't want to forget. I'm very forget. Well, no, I'm, f I'm working on my memory, but you mentioned about the weight journey. And I know, yes. again, I know we're going to go into it, but I, I want to, well, still in this introduction phase of the episode, I feel this is a good time to show people uh, the weight journey you have gone on. Mm -hmm. um, if you are looking and see, you, if yeah, you want to so, talk about this a little yeah, bit. Yeah, so now. for context, that original photo, um, I can't remember what the thing was, 2022. Um, but I started my, uh, wait, no, it would have been way, way before that. It would have been like 2018, 2019. Mm -hmm. um, so from 2020 to through to 2022, uh, I lost uh, 40 kilos. Uh, so 30% of my body weight. Um, yeah, I went from 142 kilos to 102 kilos. Um, I put some of that back on now, but I didn't tell anyone. Um, <laughs> you know, it just, I went way, way too hard. Uh, it's not, I was too thin for my frame and I've gained well, a little bit back, but this, this, this particular picture, um, yeah, is, is, is significant, isn't it? Like that's, see, that's a, that's a, you can see the clear difference in this one, mm. but this one is crystal clear. Yeah, no, that one was re was really, really fun. So the picture on the left was, uh, for the premiere of a movie called Fighting With My Family, which was for, for WWE production. Um, and with my old show at the time, The Young and the Wrestlers, that was a great podcast. That was a lot of fun. Uh, and the one on the right is, yeah, myself at the uh, skate park uh, locally. Because um, one of the things I did do once I started losing the weight and I could, you know, I was already happy that I could fit into the clothes of my youth again. I was mm -hmm. like, let's bring back something I haven't done in God knows how long. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was skateboarding and I brought it back. And as you can see in the picture in the back is my son. He jumped yeah. in as well on, on his little skateboard that I bought for him that Christmas. Yeah. That's, that's, awesome. my, uh, that's my boy there. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. So uh, I did cut you off. Uh, where were you going? Oh, I'm just going to keep ago? talking if you don't cut me off. So go nuts. <laughs> no, I don't want to cut you off. I, I don't. I, when I listen back to them, I don't like it. Mm. When I, it's one of my learning curves when I when I hear myself going, even going. Mm. So I'm just going to try and not <laughs> respond in making a sound when I'm in the car listening back, which I hate, but I have to do it um, for feedback purposes. <laughs> but when I'm making that, mm, yeah, yeah, oh, I hate it. So I'm, I'm going to try and I not almost do that did today. It. Oh, I used to stop myself. Then. <laughs> but it's all right if the guest does it, but it's not. Oh, okay, doing cool. It so I'm going to make a bunch of noises and I'm just going to keep going on this. <laughs> so, yeah, no, I, Ryan, I did cut you off. What, so before I, we, we came back to the, um, the weight journey, the mm -hmm. pictures, where were you going? Do I have no idea. No, never mind. I was just talking. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. All right. So on that note, then you you've mentioned about being a side hustler in independent wrestling. Um, I, I really want to know a little bit more about your way currently at with you've you you've got your two science degrees. Mm -hmm. What were they in? So I have a bachelor's degree in in um, in biotechnology and mm -hmm. an honors degree in environmental chemistry. So I did yeah three years oh three and a half years. Um, fell a class it was boring. Uh, <laughs> I did three yeah three and a half years in a, in a bachelor's, which was uh, a bit of fun. And then an opportunity came my way to be like, hey, do you want to do this thing as your honors project? I was like, yeah, sure, why not? I had nothing else to do. Um, yeah, so then I went and did that, and that that cool. was a ton of fun. And I'm absolutely not using it at all now. Um, but it, it was certainly a, a, a great experience. Yeah, good. Yeah, no, I, I actually want to go back and, and, and study neuroscience, which I'm probably going to do Ooh. in the next few years. Yeah, yeah that, would, that would be fun. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I've got, gone so deep into the brain. That's why you're perfect for the podcast. Um, I do actually know where we're going. We mentioned about uh, the martial arts and the fighting, the yes. arm wrestling being a direction for <laughs> an outlet. Um, you were going to take it somewhere. Yeah, so I know we felt we're like we're really tangenting at the moment, but one of the things I mentioned in the beginning uh, was my discovery of my, my neurodiversity, right? So yeah. I am uh, diagnosed ADHD and I'm in the process of being diagnosed with autism as well, uh, likely around the level one space because I'm you know, pretty reasonably functioning. Um, and during that time is one of those things where like, 
I, I was lost in the world. I couldn't find it. I was trying to settle, find my people. Um, and at the time, I was working for a previous company called uh, Genu Gamer. So Genu is a, is a uh, mental health, disability and mental health support service here in Geelong. Uh, myself and, my, and a good friend of mine, Paris Conti, we created a, a program for them that called Genu Gamer, where mm -hmm. the idea was that we would um, have programs that would assist youth and young adults um, who are neurodiverse, who face mental health challenges to use the things that they love, video games, tabletop role-playing games like Dungeons and Dragons or general pop culture uh, as a way to teach them uh, skills, whether it be, you know, capacity building skills, like how to understand yourself, how to understand somebody else, communication, uh, all those various skills that are challenging to those that are on the spectrum um, or neurodiverse. And the joy of working there, it helped me discover myself, which was really very fascinating. But with my day hustle, which was that at the time, and my side hustle, which was what you see behind me, um, I was doing games and games and I was just burning out endlessly, mm. right? Mm. And then it was uh, September, September of 2018, uh, WWE did their show here in Melbourne called The Super Showdown. And I was like, that looks dumb. I'm going to watch that. I did, and I did not know that that moment was going to like literally shape the, the my, my next four years of my life. Um, I saw a story between, you know, these names mean nothing to you, but a story between AJ Styles and Samoa Joe, which essentially the idea was Samoa Joe wanted to insert himself into AJ Styles' family. We're talking like face cutouts on family pictures. It was everything. And then it got weird and smelled, and he made the choice to like, I'm going to punch you. I'm going to punch your wife. I'm going to punch your kid. I'm going to punch your dog. You, anyone you've ever loved, I'm going to punch. I'm like, this is so dumb. I'm in. And I fell in love. From there, I discovered then the local independent wrestling scene as well. Um, particularly a, a company that, that they're not around anymore, but when they began, they were a, a massive force of change within the local space. So they, pre they, their sense of pride as a company was around inclusivity, um, whether it be, uh, you know, sort of, you know, uh, minorities with, with a lot of indigenous wrestlers there or various members of the LGBTQIA plus community, as well as understanding for those that are neurodiverse. Um, so I discovered these guys through some friends and I went and is one of those moments where it's hard to articulate the actual feeling but as I'm sitting there and I'm watching it and I'm surrounded by people and there's no judgment, there is just love for mm -hmm. not just what's happening in front of us, but also each other. And it's unspoken. Like I found my people, right? Like it didn't matter where I came from. It didn't matter what troubles I was facing because I was tr facing a lot of them at the time. All that mattered was that, hey, you're one of us. You love this. Like, this is the place where we as outcasts get to come together and be outcasts. You know what I mean? Like, this is the safe place for all us that can't find that little spot in the world. This is for us. Yeah. And I fell in love. And bit by bit, I started getting in there and working, you know, I started working a mixing desk. Because they're like, hey, you do like YouTube and stuff. You know how to work a mixing board. I was like, yeah, sure. Why not? So I started doing AV, a lot of the sound and et cetera. Uh, and then that went into commentary because they realized, yeah, I can talk a lot, as you've seen, um, which then went into, hey, you're really loud. Can you do that in a ring? I'm like, sure. So now I ring announce as well. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's one of the most fulfilling things that I, that I do. Um, it just, you have, you, you've heard the expression, fill your cup, right? Of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah, cool. So that's what it does for me. It fills my cup. Yeah. So well, you know, I, mean, I go to that show and I come out and I go, oh, and I feel content for the next well, until the next. Well, moment. that's 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 part of you know the the equation of happiness, isn't it? Is feeling satisfied and mm. enjoying the moment. But the other one part of that build build, I've just mentioned two that forms happiness, but three is purpose. You've got a sense of purpose there. Yeah. Around the sense, around the feelings of feeling heard, you've been heard, you've been seen, and you've been valued. Yeah. Right. Which offers hope. I, and I learned that, you know, of my last guest that I filmed on Saturday, actually, he's a TED talker. And he talks about, uh, let me get my notes from that. And he, he brings up things like, it was, he, 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 he <clears throat> talks about suicide. Um, and I'm assuming I've kept it in the order and he would have gone out last week. But he talks about being seen, heard, and valued, which offers hope. Um, and that's the, basically recognition. You're being recognized 
through whether it's just knowing your your name or going to this club and being heard and valued and uh, and and having a form of understanding rather than asking why you're asking what questions so yeah. they're very interested in what you know and what you can do yeah. to fulfill your role within that community if that makes sense does it no, does it make sense what no I'm it makes it makes absolutely perfect sense and i think yeah. that you're bang on in yeah. that for, you know for me and the way that my brain works um <clears throat> i'm very you know whether it be due to <clears throat> excuse me, due to, you know, bullying in, in my uh, primary school years and growing up and secondary or, you know, just this uh, thing in my brain that just goes, you're different and you don't know why. So as a result, I've spent most of my life with this desire to, to fit in and to feel included and to, to have a a purpose and to, to have that value, right? So... Yeah, you're absolutely bang on. When I found this group of people and they, you know, saw value in me and mm. and it was, yeah, no, something like that has been incredibly important in my growth journey over the last couple of years into understanding myself and, and finally being comfortable with myself. And, you know, therefore that brings out more confidence and then you feel happy because you're, oh, I know who I am now. I mm. spent so long thinking I needed to be someone else or be this, that, or the other. And I went, no, no, you know, I have this information about myself now. I've gone through these things. I've, you know, I've learned, I've reflected. Let's grow. Couldn't have said it any better than myself, mate. That's yeah. It's, I mean, you sum it up and articulate it so well. Um, you, you, you well, let's go back then, because you mentioned bullying. Um, where did that go? Where did that happen for you? Being bullied, primary school, adulthood. Uh, look, predominantly in my high, in my primary school and my high school years. Um, being a bigger kid was pretty an easy target back then, yeah. and also being someone that you know isn't the best at those social things, especially when you're growing up and it, and, it's, and it's challenging. And pardon me. Additionally, as well, I had. Um, I, don't, I wouldn't call it the burden. I don't think it's the right word, but I was very lucky in that I was quite a gifted kid. You know, I was accelerated. Yeah. I was, you know, quite intelligent. Um, so that in itself caused a rift because it's not cool to be smart, especially in the late nineties and the early two thousands. Um, I'm so you're bringing insecurities out of other people. Exactly. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so it's, you know, with the Australian, um, standard practice of just tearing someone else down, that's doing better than you. It's fascinating uh, you bring that up because sorry to cut you off, but I was um, I was when I was I was essentially bullied as an adult in uh, in here in Australia, but I I'd never heard of the 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 tall saying poppy? tall pop yeah never heard of it mm. never heard of it and I'm quite open about it now. But in my book, I in chapter one, I call my story tall poppy. Never heard it, of it. It is kind of crazy, like how that works. Like within kids, it makes sense because kids are you could be like the most normalest person in the world, and kids are just mean, you know. Yeah. And yeah. like for me, and the difference with there was because I was very lucky, as I mentioned, about having that extra ability, um, I was able to cruise through school pretty easily up until a certain point. Um, but that then led me to a position to focusing more on my social, you know, and being, you know, a young, at the time, no one knew, neurodiverse kid, you know, I was clearly anxious, had all these different things going on that no one really knew how to identify in like, I don't know, 1997. So yeah, like the, all those things then presented themselves and you know, the second, the moment of weakness or like some sort of weirdness instantly just jumps upon you. Um, yeah. And that sort of went through into, into my high school years. And, and then after then, it, you know, high school, you realize high school doesn't really matter, but like the scars of high school do. And they will mm. linger with you forever. And all of the insecurities that I had gained or were pushed upon me during those years then leaked into my adulthood, which had which then affected me in a lot of other ways. Um, yeah, so it's kind of like that rippling effect of uh, you know, if mistreatment. I, if I was a, a classmate or um, a, an aide, a teaching assistant, or a teacher of your class, or a fly in the on the wall, let's say, <clears throat> what would have what would have your classroom look like and how would you have appeared to me as your teacher? Would you okay, think? so it would appear exactly as every report I ever got read. Uh, Ryan would do better if he applied himself. Ryan would do better if he focused more time on his work than entertaining others. Uh, yeah, so class clown, 
uh, you know, focus, uh, you know, distractibility, uh, all the words that later describe ADHD, but no one knew. So that's sounds like you were bored in class though, because you were high absolutely. functioning. Absolutely. Oh no, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, without a doubt. Like, yeah. And then it got to yeah. So then, got to a point, you know, and, and still did okay. Clearly finished yeah. high school, went to study, you know, all those sort of things. So somehow, well done to me, I guess. But uh, yeah. So from if you were if you were in my classroom when I was a kid, you would have seen a dude that was just desperate to connect. Yeah, I and mean, I think everybody did on an on any level seeks to connect, don't they? Mm. And have a sense of, even the introverts on a deep level, we're talking about that in class today, you know, living by that connection, go back to the tribes. We're all looking to connect in some form, mm. shape or form. Right. Um, and, and when we don't know how to, we, we do it in many different ways. That's why, that's why the world's a beautiful place, right? Cause we do it in different ways. But you, you mentioned you got scars from being bullied. How did you get bullied in primary school? What would, um, what would that look like on a, on a yard or in the classroom? See, I was very, I was very lucky in that I was never physically bullied. So I, I've okay. never been in a fight, like yeah. literally in my whole 35, 34, 35 years of living. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, a lot of verbal, a lot, a lot of you know behind back, like that real sort of psychological, mental, um, which can be worse. Yeah, absolutely. And then of course, uh, you know, a lot of comments on my appearance. Um, you know, in case you haven't noticed, I got huge honking lips um, and a weird <laughs> shaped head. Like a very Dude. Ron Perlman chin, like it's a whole thing. Um, no, oh, I know all. it's, it's uh, but you know for that reason, like like the, these, you know, when you can find that one thing that pe- kids can grab onto, boom, you know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was, it was a lot of that, and you know, it, it is what it is. Like it's one of those things where I'm in a position now where like it's it's behind me and enough that it doesn't rule me. Um, it still plays a role. Like as I sit here and I've made self deprecating jokes this entire time, right? Because that's that was my coping mechanism was if I get ahead of it, no one will make fun of me because I've already done it. And there's no mm-hmm. worse thing that anyone else can say that I haven't said to myself. Um, but yeah, you know, cause it's one of those things, if you can hide, hide your pain in laughter, or if you can, um, you know, show, give the outward opinion that you're not phased, uh, you know, it's, it's survival. It's kind of all yeah. what it is. It's survi- High school is just survival <laughs> really. Yeah. Yeah, it can be for sure for some people. Absolutely. You, we, so you mentioned that you cruised through school, but it wasn't as simple as that as you went down the track, was it? Join us tomorrow to hear more from today's incredible guests and learn valuable insights to help you lead your own way. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you then.